Hi everyone, I'm about to paint a variety of objects with this brand new mirror paint that I've created. But before I do that, I want to tell you a couple of key things that you need to know to make sure you're safe when using it. And then I'm going to show you how to get the most out of it on your work on different surfaces so you know what to expect. The first thing I need to tell you, and this is crucial, this stuff is a solvent. So the other paints I've made have been acrylics, they've been water-based. This is a solvent, which means you want to have a room that is well ventilated. You don't want to be inhaling these fumes. If you've got a mask lying around, wear it, it's a good idea. The other thing is, when you use a brush with this, and I do recommend brush applying it rather than spraying it, um, when you use a brush with this, you're going to need to wash that brush in thinners or white spirit to remove mirror. Okay, with that said, let's have a look at what I'm going to paint today and see if I can share some of those tips. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the goodies I've got ready to paint. I thought we'd do um, a balloon dog, a little homage to Jeff Koons. I thought that's the perfect thing to try mirror out on. I've also got a spoon. Now, both of these things are a kind of plastic, so we're seeing what it's like on a non-porous surface. I think it'd be fun to do a ping pong ball, and I've actually got a bright yellow one left over from another project. So it's going to be interesting to see how it color covers this, or maybe doesn't cover this. I thought it'd be good to see what it does on glass. Um, that's a really cool test. I've got something porous here. So I've got wood. Um, interesting point to note here. I've coated part of this wood with PVA glue and I've left some of it uncoated. Likewise, with this piece of paper, I've coated some of it with PVA glue and some of it not. So some of it's sealed with PVA, some of it isn't. Let's see how Mirror reacts to that. And then the ultimate of all ultimates, the bean. I've got some jelly beans, and I thought it would be really cool to make a mirrored bean, because you know who would be really annoyed if everyone could make a really good bean and it didn't cost lots of money and we could give it a pretentious title like cloudy bean gate or something right so you get your mirror you've got your bottle interestingly you might think you haven't got very much because it's a tiny weeny little bottle but it goes so far it literally coats one micron thick. So the coverage you're going to get from this tiny bottle is going to be absolutely off the charts. Right. So Charlotte, come in tight on this and we're going to show them. Can you, can you guys see this? Look, how, look at this. this is, sorry, I get so excited when I get this out. Ready? Oh, it really is honestly a liquid mirror. That is a mirror in a bottle. Now, for those of you that have been following for a little while, you will remember I always bang on about using a soft synthetic brush. And with this stuff, you really, really, really need it because if you use some scratchy comb-like thing, it's going to put marks in your lovely mirrored surface. You don't want that. So you want a soft brush. So it doesn't need to be expensive. People ask me what ones I use. Um, actually, you know, the, the best ones are the Kryler ones, they're really affordable, but, but these synthetic brushes here that I've dug out will be fine. Right, let's start off with Mr. Balloon Dog, and I'll show you how I apply it. Tiny bit on the brush, just the tip. My gosh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Can you actually see that? I hope this is being picked up on the camera. And then I've got the tiniest bit on my brush, right? Please don't dip a whole load in. And watch this, are you ready? I'm literally just going to coat that balloon dog. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? And what I'm doing is I'm trying to flatten out those brush marks. I don't know if you can see, but I'm literally keeping it as thin as humanly possible. I'm trying to use as little paint as I possibly can. And believe me, when this dries, it gets even more mirrory. But you're probably seeing the whole studio reflected in this already. Wow, and that's what I mean by coverage, guys. I actually have done all of that with that one tiny little dip of the brush. I'm almost, you, you could actually say at this point, I'm pretty much dry brushing it. Isn't that just amazing? <laughs> What 
what I would say as well, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm working very quickly. I'm not really letting my brush stop anywhere because you really don't want this stuff drying out on your bristles because then it's going to get scratchy. So you want to work fast uh, and you want to really be moving around that surface. Okay guys, so that is one coat. I've actually decided with my balloon dog that I'm going to leave his bum not painted so that we can see the contrast as it dries. You could do a second coat, so a little bit of advice, if there are a couple of little scratchy marks, you are so much better off doing a second coat than trying to work into this while it's semi-wet because that's when you're going to get those brush marks. So I'm going to leave that to dry and take a little look at my spoon. So um, there it is. Uh, apparently this is some sort of eco-plastic, don't worry we're not hurting the environment and I'm going to paint uh, I think the front of the spoon with the mirror. Ready? Same deal really and as you would expect that's reacting in exactly the same way as Mr Balloon Dog was. But again working very quickly really not wanting any brush marks so I'm almost stroking the surface of that and I think already you'd be forgiven for thinking, actually, that was a stainless steel metal spoon. I mean, this stuff's some kind of voodoo, isn't it? It literally is a mirror in a bottle. I mean, you could mirror just about anything with that. There you go. Mirrored spoon. Next up, ping pong ball. So I don't really know what ping pong balls are made out of. It's, I don't think it's plastic. If anybody knows, um, tell me in the comments, what are ping pong balls made of? I've um, stuck my ping pong ball into a screw, which I put in a putty rubber. Um, but I'm hoping this will work. See, it's almost a bit dull, isn't it? And I wonder if that's the yellow. So I'm thinking that we'll probably need two coats of mirror on this ping pong ball to get it up to maximum... Uh, maximum shine but let's see yeah I'm definitely going to want to give that another coat in a minute it feels like the surface of it was slightly bobbly I don't know don't know why so I'm going to get I'm going to give that another coat it's not quite doing what I'd expect like the uh, balloon dog and the spoon so in this is going to be interesting what does mirror do on glass I think it's time to find out so it's just an old food jar from some pasta sauce or something um, oh, that's really interesting. So, on glass, guys, it doesn't stick quite as well as you would like. So, I think it's going to be a case, again, of building up a few coats on glass. Because that's still quite see-through, isn't it? So, it almost likes a little bit of colour. But it has stuck. So, I think if we let that dry and give it another coat in a minute, it will be good. Let's see what it does on the wood. Now, as I said, I've sealed this bit just with plain, normal craft store PVA glue. And you've heard me bang on about this quite a lot, about why you use PVA glue to seal things. The reason is, is it's really cheap, it's really stable, it's neutral pH, it's not gonna rot anything. There's all sorts of lotions, you always write to me, say, oh, I've ordered this stuff off the internet to seal things, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, PVA is as good as anything. Right, here we go, on the wood. So this bit, no PVA. You can see it's soaking in quite a lot, isn't it? But I do think with a few coats, you can get it to do a mirror. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what it does on the PVA. World of difference. Can you see? It's not actually soaking in anywhere near as much. Okay. It's still going to need two coats to get to full mirror, but it's completely different. I mean, that's almost chrome. It's retained a bit of the texture. It's actually quite pretty. Um, paper. I imagine paper also being a porous surface is going to react very similarly to the wood. So for those of you who do do art on paper, this is the sort of thing you can expect. So to be straight up about this you might not be able to see your reflection in a bumpy surface like this um, you know but you will make it look quite foily and metallic so the flatter the surface really the more mirrory it's gonna look 
Last but no means least, the most important piece we're going to make together today, the bean. Right. Do you know what? For the bean, I think I'm going to use a, a smaller brush. Okay, here we go. I'm going to attempt to make my own bean gate. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I wish we could get bigger jelly beans. If anybody knows where to get jumbo giant jelly beans, that would be fun. Okay, bean boy, you're not the only person who can make shiny beans, mister. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Literally zero pence worth of paint and a jelly bean from Home Bargains. And we're away, guys. We're away. You can see the whole of Chicago in that. Okay, I've got to let that dry. Right, I'm going to let all of this dry. We're going to come back and have a look. We're going to give the things that need a second coat a second coat. And then we're going to see how they came out. See you in a sec. Okay, everyone. So everything's pretty much dry now. And surprisingly, it dries really fast. Being a solvent, it just evaporates and it's done. So the glass is looking quite nice now. But it definitely needs that second coat. Interestingly, look how much paint is actually left in there. I tipped out the tiniest little bit. I painted all these things and I've got loads left and well over half a bottle there. So just showing you how far it goes. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to give our... Oh, I've got hair in it. Forgive it. If I was doing this properly for a piece of art or a show or something, I'd take a bit longer. But I'm just demonstrating to you what you can expect if you decide to paint something shiny. So I reckon this would be the same, actually, if you painted some ceramics like, I don't know, like a mug or, or something like that. I think it's going to react in the same way. And I think you can see now quite quickly that that's pretty much a mirror, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's basically done. That's beautiful. Um, let's see our spoon. Come on, that's crazy. That looks like... That's a, silk, that's a stainless steel chrome spoon. Oh, no, it's not. It's a plastic spoon. You can have hours of fun with that. Um, does it even need a second coat? I don't know. Should I do one for fun and just see if it makes it any better? Do you know what? I don't think it adds anything. If anything, I don't know. Yeah, it kind of has. But I don't think it needed it. I'm just doing it for the sake of it at this point. But yeah, I think that gives you an idea. I think on plastic, on plastic, this stuff is crazy. If you, if you paint any miniatures or you do any plastic model work or anything, some cosplay pieces, you're, you're using silicon, you're using rub, this is going to be crazy. You're going to have so much fun with this. Mr. Balloon Dog, he, do you know what? He doesn't even need a second coat, really. But it's going to be fun to give him one, I think, just to iron out some of these imperfections. Dried okay. It's still a little bit not as mirrory as I like. So I guess there's small imperfections in the surface. So we're going to have to lay it. There you go. Look at that. So as I add another coat, it gets much more mirrory. And I suppose the paint is filling in those small little holes in the ball surface. And my idea was that we'd get some sort of, I don't know, is it a convex or a concave? I, I never know, but we'd, we'd be able to sort of see the whole room in it, like, like one of those sort of gazing ball kind of things. That's a Jeff Koons theme, isn't there? He did a whole series of gazing balls. Right. He likes shiny things. There you go. Now, I can pretty much see myself in that, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I, think that. I think we could class that as a mirror ball. Have a little look at our wood now. As you can see, massive difference between the pva bit and the non pva bit. That is way more mirrory. And there you go, the second coat doing everything you'd hope it would. Literally now completely sealed. And there's your mirror moment that you're after. And on the other bit, hey, not bad, but it's thirsty. It's soaking that up. So it's just not as economical. Definitely seal it with PVA. That's going to be good when that's dry. On the paper, bit with the PVA, second coat. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Are you seeing that? I, don't, I always wonder if the camera can show you quite what I see, but that's stunning. 
And then, and again, I'm feeling it. I wish you guys could feel this. It's thirsty. It's just soaking it up. I, I want the PVA glue. I like painting over the PVA glue. I don't like painting into the water. It's just seeping uh, into the paper. It's just seeping in there. And uh, should we finish off our bean? Don't know. Oh, I need my little brush for the bean. I need, I need my special bean brush. Right, the bean brush. Here we go. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. Do you know what? I don't even know if it really needed a second coat. It's so little and fiddly. But those of you that uh, do miniatures are going to be shouting at me, aren't you, that I'm doing this all wrong. Anyway, I've given you an idea. There's the bean. Let's let him dry. The little bean. Okay, guys, so there you have it. We've painted on glass, we've painted on plastic, we've painted on wood, we've painted on porous things. And this stuff's crazy. I absolutely adore it. It's literally a mirror in a bottle. It goes so well on just about everything I tried it on. So I hope you enjoy using it. Please share what you make with me. Use the hashtag Culture Hustle on Instagram so that I get to see it. Thank you for being there. Any questions? If you get stuck, just hit up the comments below or email us. We'll be glad to help. Have fun with it. Bye.